Storytelling is perhaps the most fascinating part of any medium. When we read a book, watch a movie or play a video game, we can always appreciate if the story is told in a fresh and interesting way. And even if the story itself is nothing to sing about, with some special techniques it can still be elevated above others. In video games, there is a lot of ways storytelling can go. Visuals, text and even environment can be used as a means to deliver the message. When it comes to cutscenes, which is a traditional way to go, games borrow heavily from movie makers, photo artists and even painters. We use the classic rules of composition to place objects on the screen in such a way that they generate more tension and interest. We sit there for hours, picking the right camera angle and lighting for a keyframe, which is supposed to keep the player on the toes. And of course, we experiment with different color schemes to set the tone and mood of our cutscenes. How exactly does it work? Let's ask our cinematic artist, who is a rare guest on this side of the camera, since he's the one doing all the shooting and editing of our dev diaries. One color can usually have multiple meanings, depending on the context. Uh, in our game we came up with two different color schemes to highlight three different natures of uh, our hero's insanity. Uh, red, for example, uh, means uh, our protagonist uh, is losing his mind uh, because he is struggling to accept his own actions. Red dominates this cutscene, uh, it's the color of blood, it's impossible to overlook. Uh, it works on psychological and biological levels, it has this electrifying effect. Uh, red tells you to stop uh, whatever you're doing and pay attention. Of course, colors go toe-to-toe -to -toe with other techniques and tools. Storyboard, shot longevity, composition, etc. They all have come to games from other industries. Finding the perfect sequence is a game of trial and error. And when every piece of the puzzle is in its place, comes perhaps the most important part. I'm talking about lighting, of course. Uh, lighting is such a versatile tool. And we use it not only to create the right atmosphere, but also to tell a story in a symbolic way. Um, Let's give a look at this particular shot. Light and dark symbolize the wellness of the main character and the insanity that slowly devours his mind. And even though there is light behind the character, he still cannot resist stepping into the dark. And that's why we use backlight here. And by doing this simple trick, we bring the hero to the front and hide the rest of the environment. And at the same time, to build up tension and surprise the viewer. So cutscenes often follow the same rules as cinematography. And not unlike movies, video games have their share of technological limitations. Take animations, for example. Fluid and realistic movements are really important for a believable storytelling. Motion capture obviously helps a lot, but subtle, delicate animations usually require a lot of resources, which sometimes game developers simply don't have. This can certainly be a weakness or a strength, depending on how you see it. Making a cutscene uh, is always a compromise uh, between what we can and cannot do. Uh, we have to be really inventive uh, because we can sacrifice technical aspects without actually uh, uh, sacrificing artistic value. Uh, one of the simplest tricks you can do uh, is switch to first person and suddenly you don't have to worry about those suborn animations. Our trailer is a really good example. Uh, uh, originally our hero was supposed to uh, walk all the way to the chair, but making uh, these fingers move was a really meticulous and exhausting process. It was taking a lot of time and our animation artist was getting really frustrated. Then an idea popped up in my mind, uh, why not keep them in animate and just make a fly move. Uh, in the end we saved some time and the result uh, was even better than before. Tricks like these are certainly common in every industry. We are sharing some of our techniques to give you a taste of what to expect. The story is probably the most cryptic and ambiguous part of the Sinking City, and we want the player to discover it bit by bit, because trust me, there is a lot to discover. Once again, everybody, thank you so much for watching this update. Maybe hit that subscribe button if you like what we do, and I'll see you next time.